So in this video, we're going to see what 500 US dollars can get you in terms of a home in Merida, Mexico, which means nationwide, you would be saving approximately 1400 us dollars just by moving to mexico just on rent alone not including all the other savings that exist here just on the rent and throughout this video i'm going to give you some tips and tricks because it's not necessarily as easy as finding a place online and then immediately renting it out you definitely want boots on ground and there's some other like need to know stuff that we'll talk about as we look at these homes but for now let's see what homes are available at least online and at the end i will show you a house that i think first glance would be perfect for me alex and henry if we decide to move back to merida let's look okay so first off i'm using inmuebles24.com as my website of choice i also recommend facebook marketplace got this in Via de Oriente subdivision. I don't think in Canassin, Canassin, I don't know what that means. Canassin, Yucatan? Ah, okay, so this is uh, southern side, so I guess we'll say now. Theoretically, all of Merida is safe, so you could get a home anywhere, but I would argue that Centro, the center line, let me look at the map real quick. This road going to Coquel, on through to Centro and going kind of like this, this little line here. That line north is probably where most people are gonna want to rent. That has the most conveniences. We, we could use the word that it's safer, but I think realistically, it just has a lot more of the conveniences that we, as, as expats, as immigrants, we tend to look for. We're looking for not only affordability, but a nice place for the kids to play. We're looking for options when it comes to places to eat, options when it comes to schooling, options. Like, so all of those things tend to happen in the northern part of Merida. The southern part, you will definitely find distinctly more affordable locations. However, you might be further away from the school you want your child to go to. You might be further away from plastic playgrounds, which is kind of a weird way to phrase it, but just the newer playgrounds that are a little more resistant to heat. There's a lot of metal playgrounds in Merida, as well as I feel like in the Centro North region has many more conveniences that especially if it's your first time in Mexico, that's a huge benefit to have. So I would lean in that family in the first place, but also if you're gonna live outside of Merida proper, like so outside of the Pedifetico, and this is the Pedifetico, right? This gigantic circle going all around Merida, that is the Pedifetico, it's the peripheral, if you will, of, Me of Merida. Anything outside of that, you risk not as good internet, you risk, you know, Ubers, limited DDs, that kind of thing, limited deliveries, there's limited stores, like it becomes that much more difficult. Now that being said, Merida is constantly growing and constantly, you know, improving its infrastructure and, and getting better and better. So over time, this could be a thing, but for me, being more central, especially because I want my son to meet with other kids and have play dates, have places to meet with each other. The northern and central area is, is generally gonna provide this a little bit more. If I were to live outside of the Pedifetico, Calcal would be a maybe kind of scenario, although Calcal tends to be further away from a lot of the things. Las Americas or Temozo Norte, those regions are a little more established in terms of outside the Pedifetico, but still, it's really house specific in terms of whether they've got good internet or not. So again, a little more extra caution required in those areas. So this home, Kanasin, Yucatan, probably not in an area I would necessarily go to, but let's just see what we've got. Two bedroom, one bath, pet friendly. I'm assuming these are multiple houses like lined up next to each other. Um, kind of like a shotgun home is what it kind of reminds me. So literally no, no furniture, no appliances. So you'd have to, to prep that up. We'll talk later on how I would handle an unfurnished home because that is very popular, especially if you're going for budget, right? If you want to go cheaper. Um, so yeah, so the, again, this looks like a nice place, but it does look more communal living. It, it looks like it's closed in with other homes and location wise, not ideal in my opinion. All right, next one, 9,000. So it's about 450, less than 450 US dollars. Two bedroom, Colonia Vista. Okay, so this is the fancier region, right? It's near the Montes. It's not in the Montes, it's near the Montes and it's near Alta Brisa. So good, good neighborhood for sure. Let's see what we see. Gated parking spot. 
I like all this openness, by the way. Looks furnished. Right, I love seeing ceiling fans. Full fridge. Um, not seeing it. I saw a quarter, I saw, I saw a little bit of the range here. Um, so hopefully it's good. Is that carpet? Is that carpet? I am anti-carpet. I also see the AC unit, so that's good, but I'm anti-carpet actually. Maybe because I have a dog, I do not want carpet. But this doesn't look like carpet, but this looks like carpet. Maybe it's just partially, I'm not sure. Because they both look like... I'm very confused about what I'm seeing. It almost looked like there was two entries. It, like this does, looks like the living room. This would be the living room. Curious. Anyway, I've got all kinds of questions offhand, worth looking at. It looks like it says high speed internet. Again, I would verify semi furnished. So I, since we opened this up, I'm almost positive this is letting you know you need four months deposit. We'll, we'll maybe talk about deposits later, but it is common in Medida to have four months. The first month, you would pay four months up front, one for the rent, one for the deposit, one for a notary, which used to not cost a full month's rent, but oftentimes now it does, and then one for the guarantor. Now, if you happen to have an actual guarantor in Mexico, you don't have to do that, but a guarantor is essentially a cosigner. So, kind of like in the US, you would not cosign for anyone, I like, why would somebody co-sign for you? Why would you let somebody risk co-signing for you? Even though we're all respectable. So ultimately you're gonna end up paying four months of rent, usually maybe three, three and a half, depending on specific uh, circumstances, but four months in advance, usually for Medida, if you have a normal contract. I did make a video on how I personally have rented so far in Mexico to include Medida. I do it non-contractually. I, I do basically verbal agreements, which is not always easy to do. That's its own video, but okay. So this one, lovely area. I love the price point. It's two bedroom, one bath, which is perfect for me and Alex. Really, really like this location. I would absolutely have to go and physically see it to make sure that it's good with, with internet, etc. of course. Cholul, let's talk about Cholul real quick. Oh, this is on the outskirts of Cholul. So you've got Cholul, you've got Concal, Concal? I might be pronouncing that wrong. Um, and there are two new developing areas. There's a lot of homes for sale in this region. I would be very concerned about the infrastructure, especially in terms of internet. But again, you're further away. So I do not know how easily you can get an Uber here. I don't know how easily you can get a taxi. Generally speaking, if you're gonna live outside the Periferico, I would recommend having a car just to get to the places you want to get to because it's such a new area. I don't even know what kind of stores they might have in this area. Do they even have small tiendas? I do not know, I do not know. But internet alone would probably make me kind of say no. However, if you go to the closer Cholul areas, negotiable, that's, that's something we can talk about perhaps. So subdivision. Mm, that's it, those are your pictures. Okay, well for me, not enough information to be excited. 360 US dollars for that home. Just wanted to interrupt and say that if you are enjoying this content, I do have a YouTube membership and every month I give you at least one bonus video and a little more behind the scenes of Mexico living. Grand Santa Fe. Okay, so Grand Santa Fe is part of Coquel. Coquel is a growing area for sure. So I, I feel like, especially if you do not have children, Calcal might be a great place. And I say if you don't have kids, especially if they're not comfortable with Spanish, they're gonna to wanna to play with other English speaking kids. And the majority of those people are gonna be Centro North Medida. In terms of a play date scenario, it could be difficult going from Calcal all the way to, you know, the malls, etc. So gray area. However, if your kids speak Spanish or if you don't have kids, Calcal is not necessarily a bad place. Again, when you're meeting up with other friends, they might tend to lean a little more central. Calcal does, I believe, have a pretty decent internet infrastructure. 
so you should be good with internet. Always double check. Offhand, Kalkal for me is not a no. It does make it slightly more difficult with a kid, I think. This is a two bedroom, one and a half bath, little yard, which I'm very pro. This is the half bath, yep. Not a lot of pictures. I want more pictures. However, potentially worth a look. And this is for 400 US dollars, 8,000 pesos. 400, two bedroom, two bath. I think we can do better, but it's not necessarily a bad place. So one bedroom, one bath, kind of in the central region. I think, so you've got Parque de, de la Aleman, which is a nice region. It's not too, like, could be good. I don't know the particulars of Mexico Oriente, but basically it looks like it's in a decent part of town. So doable, doable for sure. I feel like it could work, but it's one bedroom, one bath, right? So for me, very dark. This is my impression right now. It's, it's very dark, limited lighting. Yeah, I don't like the small fridge. I think, I think in Merida, you're going to want to have a large fridge or, or at least we'll say an average size fridge, which an average fridge in Mexico is still a little smaller than an average fridge in the US, but nonetheless, you'll want an average for Mexico size fridge because there's very little that you can keep out. Here in San Cris, it's cooler. I can keep a lot of my vegetables out on the counter. So it works that I have a very small fridge. In Merida, I had a full-size fridge and I, I used it. I used all of it. It was very important. So I don't like how dark this is, number one. Other than the dark, it's not actually bad, but I'm gonna tell you why the dark is a potential problem. I'm not seeing an AC unit. So that's, that's one thing for AC. Now, let's talk about the importance of windows in Merida. I had an upstairs studio apartment. I had one AC. Now it's a studio, so I don't really need more than one AC unit. The one AC unit was above the bed, right in the sleeping area, which is definitely where you want it. During the middle of the day, there were many times where I did not turn the AC on. One, just to be respectful of my landlord because I didn't want a, a huge electric bill for her. She paid my electric bill, but I also had all these windows. So I essentially, there were two windows in particular that I kept open most of the time. We also had screens, so I don't have to worry about bugs slash mosquitoes getting in. But I would keep these two windows constantly open because of the airflow that came through. And the wind that would come through my home upstairs with these two windows kept my house pretty cool so that I didn't have to have the AC on literally all the time. I really only turned the AC on at night and sometimes a little bit during the day, but really it was at night that I used the AC and it was most effective at night. But part of the reason why I didn't feel the need to have it on all the time is with the windows open, I could create this kind of tunnel that went through my home. And, and the, the wind, I, I did have a fan, I had a ceiling fan, which was pretty much always on. Between the fan and the, and the natural airflow, it kept my house really cool comparatively, right? To where I really only needed the AC at night. When I would visit friends or go to places that didn't have this airflow going through, their AC had to be on all the time all the time to accommodate, which can get pretty expensive in terms of, of electric bills, right? So when I see this, not only do I want more light just in general, because light is lovely, but I'm thinking that, that the AC unit, which I don't even see, but it, assuming they have AC, has to be on all the time, and that is unfortunate. It's un like, that would not be ideal. So again, for me, this house is kind of on the no side. It is, you know, 5,900, which is about 300 US dollars. So price-wise, it's nice. It says it has air conditioning. Four bedrooms, four bathrooms for 4,800? What? What? Let's look at this. Let's look at this. Let's start with location. Real Montejo. Hmm. Okay. So this word, Ditsia, I'm not sure how you pronounce that. It is one of the new locations. I know they're doing a lot of building up there. Again, with the new infrastructure, I would really question the internet situation. Like, that would be my first question. Yeah, I would also, Las Americas, for example, uh, is a little more established, but it does have flood zones. So when it rains crazily, it could get difficult to come and go. 
like cars might not be able to drive through. That is a thing that happens there. Any new development, that would be another question I would ask in addition to the internet is the flooding. Let's look at, but yeah, four bedroom, four bath. If you've got a large family, 4,800 is 240 US dollars a month. For four bedroom, this is why I've got all these questions. I feel like it can't possibly have everything, but um, so this looks like, a kitchen area with a really small fridge and a bed. So maybe when they say four bedrooms, they just mean four beds. And it's got a little microwave. I don't see a cooking top, so this is a concern. Again, if you're only paying 250 or 240 dollars, you could buy gas tanks. You can buy a gas, you know, grill. Got parking. Nice bathroom. So I think this is the same. This is that where the kitchen is here and such. We've got the AC unit. Um, was that a TV? I'm not sure what that was. Okay, so that was this bedroom. And then you go down the stairs. I'm not sure. This, I mean, this outside cleaning space, outside space, another bathroom, another bedroom with its own sink. I am starting to suspect that you're renting a room for 4,800 pesos as opposed to the entire home. Starting to suspect because each room is kind of broken up as if it's its own little studio. It's got its own sink. It's got its own bathroom. I, that would be my question. Honestly, I, I'm starting, I would suspect this. So I don't know if it's intended for one family to rent this. Lots of questions. I don't necessarily like the area. Probably a hard no for me. Four bedroom, three bath. Oh, this is this is fixer upper category. So this for me is, is just an automatic no. Maybe for buying, if you if you if you're wanting to refurbish this, I, I feel like this probably has the bones to make it epic if you've got the money to refurbish, but. That is, that is not interesting to me in particular. Okay, so this is in San Pedro Chulul. All right. Okay, so San Pedro Chulul is again, a little more on the outskirts of the Chulul neighborhood. It's physically closer to Medida, which is nice, but it is still on the outskirts. It's, it's an area I would still definitely question whether we're good or not, but location wise, this is a more this is a fancier location. The clientele is intended to be fancy. So there, there is a concept that they understand they're gonna to have to take care of you a little bit. It, it allows pets, which is nice. I would be very careful of just the internet infrastructure, that kind of thing. You're close enough to where other people would want to hang out with you that I think this will work. These pictures make me wonder if this is fully built. These look very potentially not, like this is, is a fake picture. This is a, right, it's not a, it's not a photograph. Um, however, right, I'm seeing the fan. I am not seeing the AC unit, but I would hope. It looks nice. It's unfurnished, but it looks nice. Yeah, great. So again, I would, I'm thinking great potential. I like the yard, because I got a dog. Again, so this is a fake picture, so not, this might not be built. This is, again, a new area, new and developing. We don't know for sure what it's going to have. I would make sure, of course, of course, the house has to already be built for me to move in, but also they have to turn uh, the internet on for me so that I know what that looks like. So, and very subdivision, very cookie cutter, vaguely Stepford Wives. I am not a huge fan of this cookie cutter type of look. However, could be affordable, could, be, could work perfectly. Uh, a more manicured kind of look. Las Americas also leans in this cookie cutter category where all the houses kind of look similar, but they're modern, they're new, they're modern, etc. So pros and cons, right? Pros and cons, depending, depends on what you're looking for in Mexico. Medida has a little bit of everything. For 9,000 pesos, 450 US dollars, two bedroom, two and a half bath, pending, infrastructure, right? Pending the internet, etc. This could work out nicely. Very colorful. Three bedroom, two and a half bath, outskirts of the nice area. Yep, so close to Colonia Maya, close to Alta Brisa. Yep, but just a, a little on the older homes category. 10,000, so 
right at 500 US dollars. So one thing I will say in terms of security in Medida, it is a safe location. I don't wanna suggest that it's not safe, but it is also a place where people will sometimes knock on your door asking for things, asking for money, asking for food, asking for, like, it is a thing. And so for me, having a little more distance in my daily life is super important. So I do recommend between your door and the street, there needs to be another door, whether it's a gate, whether it's a fence, whether it's just something. The place that Alex and I lived at longest had, we were in the upstairs studio, so we had a door upstairs that, that led to our studio apartment, but also down the stairs was another locked door. And I made the mistake several times actually, but one time I regretted it, where I left that door unlocked and a gentleman came to my door asking you know, for, for money, for help, etc. But most importantly, he wouldn't leave. And so I had to encourage him to leave much more forcefully than I necessarily wanted to. Luckily, it, it worked out to where he, his intention was not to harm me. But yeah, I, I don't know. Did he want to live in my house? He, he kept staying, he kept not leaving. To avoid this very, very uncomfortable situation where a gentleman who of course doesn't speak English and my Spanish is not the best, I would always recommend something between your front door and the sidewalk or the, the main street just for that little extra layer of protection and then always keep that other door locked. Don't, like, don't assume that people will not enter your gate just because it's closed. People will, so you wanna lock that, that external door and you wanna have an external door that you can lock. So yeah, so this has that front blocked out area, which I'm a huge fan of. We've got the ceiling fans. Again, this is unfurnished. Okay, so we got windows in the back. You have the windows in the front. I feel like you could get good airflow here, maybe. So that's always a plus, especially because again, might not have AC downstairs. Again, so unfurnished. What is this intention? What is this? Por qué? Por qué is that there? Okay. I'm, I like this. I like all balcony type areas. I'm a huge fan of. Huge, huge fan of. But I'm not seeing. So some of these colors are not necessarily my style, but I can live with it. Um, but I, what I'm not seeing is an AC unit which for Merida is, especially in the bedrooms, pretty mandatory. So if this has three bedrooms, I would want a minimum of three AC units. Do I want one in the living room? Probably, but again, if I'm able to get airflow, it won't be that big of a deal. So especially, so 10,500 for three bedrooms, two and a half bath, I think is a great price. It probably has AC. I, I can't even imagine. And then of course, Always with the internet. We gotta have good internet. Internet, AC, those are my main questions. And then of course I'll walk through. So let's talk about how I would furnish a house just since we're here. I would have a different strategy here in San Chris if I had to get an unfurnished location. But for Merida, number one mandatory I think is AC units. AC units, by the way, cost a hefty amount. A hefty amount, especially because you're gonna to want to have new and fancy and all that kind of stuff. We're talking about a minimum 200, but it could roll all the way up to 600 US dollars for one unit. That is one of the mandatory items. Another mandatory item would be a fridge because all the food has to, like, it, you can't store, even if you're planning on eating everything raw and you don't necessarily want a, a stove or anything immediately, you gotta put the food somewhere. So you gotta have a fridge. Now, would I buy, especially if I, if I was on a very tight budget, would I buy a dorm fridge, like a very small fridge initially? Probably. Because especially if I'm buying an AC unit, we're gonna talk about a small fridge in the first place and then upgrade later when I'm able to, right? Now, beauty of Medida, just as an FYI, I can absolutely sleep on a hammock. So I've been sleeping in this hammock every single day since we bought it, and a hammock is super inexpensive. So, Alex does not necessarily appreciate sleeping on a hammock. Again, if I have to pay for an AC unit and I have to pay for a fridge, Alex might be sleeping on a hammock until we can, right, for a month or so, until I can get additional funds to purchase later, right? So a range doesn't necessarily cost that much. However, 
especially for the first month when I'm paying for the AC unit and I'm paying for the small fridge, I would probably price a gas range and then and then see how much that costs compared to maybe a, a one burner electric range. I hate electric ranges, by the way. However, um, would I be willing to deal with that while I'm furnishing my home? Yes. If I literally had to furnish a home on a, on a tight budget, this would depend on how much money I've got saved, how much money I'm willing to spend on this, but because I know that all of these things ultimately cost a decent amount of money, I would look for a home that has some of these, right? At least if it has an AC unit. Even if it's an old AC unit, will that suffice while I furnish the rest of the home? Yes, it will. That's how I would start. My first month, those would be my focus items, and then little by little every month, depending on how much I can you know, muster up, I'll find the rest of the furniture. The beauty is, once you find an inexpensive place that you have to furnish, you can take all of that with you, right? If you install an AC unit, you can take that AC unit right out and bring it to your next home. So it's one of those investments that might hurt at the beginning, but it's yours. The landlord is not gonna expect you to keep that unit in the house, but likewise, the landlord is not gonna give you a discount on the next month's rent just because you bought you know, a fridge or because you bought uh, appliances no no that's your item that was your decision to add whatever appliances whatever AC unit and so you just take it with you when you leave and you're good so it's it's an upfront investment definitely renting an unfurnished home Las Americas again a little outside the area potential for flooding I would double check what areas flood, because not, not all of Las Americas floods, but it is $9,450 for three bedroom. The larger your family is, the more it might make sense to move a little further out. This is an area though that you would ideally probably want a car. So three bedroom, two bath. This looks like it's zone two. So it's a slightly newer area. So zone one, they built first, then two, then three. Again, internet, right? So it looks, it looks lovely. Um, this is a place that has a range, I don't see a fridge, but I'll bet you it actually does have one. But yeah, this is a nice property, I feel like. See the AC units? This area. So I, I'm only seeing the range, which might mean in terms of appliances, the fridge is probably the only thing you need to buy. Again, it could be that we just can't see it. Behind this wall might be a fridge, I'm not sure. Not bad for 9,000 for, for three bedrooms. This might be the home I would look into. Pending school. School, lo school location is huge if you want your child to go to school. And a lot of the schools that I would probably consider are inside the Pedifetico, which makes this really uncomfortable because five days a week, Alex would have to go to school. Las Americas being outside that could add up quickly. So let me just show you real quick the house that I would probably get, just based on what this website is showing me at least. So this is the type of home that I would probably seriously look at. Again, internet, et cetera, right? But it is right at the 10,000, so my max 500 US dollars a month budget. It is a three bedroom, two bath. Okay, it is in, I can't pronounce this word, ex compeche, ex com anyway, let's look at the map. It's very close to Francisco de Montejo region. It's just a very good local kind of region. But this is for a three bedroom, two bath, which I love the potential of, but it's very close. Like literally, I, I was in, let me see if I can zoom. I was in Terranova. My most recent Airbnb in Merida was in Terranova and I walked, walked, all the way through Francisco de Montejo and walked to the Museo del Mundo Maya. Walked. So the fact that this is closer to that region, already happy. I love this neighborhood that I walked through. Had lots of little tiendas, lots of little places to eat. And it's close enough to all the amenities that I would have everything I need. So ideally situated. Now let's look at the house. It has a gated let me show you this. So, so gated front, like I said, it doesn't have any green, which is ideal for, for a Henry situation, but nonetheless, I could let Henry roam if he wanted to, if he was willing to in the heat outside. 
that makes me happy. While unfurnished intimidates me at the end of the day, I like that I can decorate the house as I want to. So it would be one of those slow and steady, using my every month buying something new method. There's AC everywhere. There's fans everywhere. I feel like also there's a decent amount of lighting to where I can open windows and possibly get airflow without using the AC all the time. But good to have AC as a backup. You've got some separation between the houses. Kitchen has basically nothing. It just has a sink, so I would have to furnish everything slowly. But yeah, to me, this meets all my wickets. It's got the bones that I need to make it the perfect place for me. A 500 home budget is, is a very comfortable budget for me. Like with, with the rest of my income, I can do a decent amount. So this would be the kind of place. I would not recommend an unfurnished home if it's literally your first time in Merida or your first time in Mexico. You're just gonna have so much to figure out. There's just so much to, to learn about living in Mexico that if you're also adding on the stress of finding furniture, I just think so for your first home, I would not do this. However, I have been living in Mexico for close to three years now. Wow, almost three years. So I feel like everything is not gonna shock me anymore. So adding on the stress of furniture would be okay at this point in my journey in Mexico. So not for the faint of heart, especially for the faint of heart on a budget, but doable. So guys, I hope you found that helpful. I hope you can see just the wide range of opportunities when it comes to rental homes in Merida as well as Mexico in general. Yes, I would say ultimately that the rent has increased in Merida as in most places. Inflation has definitely touched Mexico, but it is still an area where you can find a place that's perfect for pretty much any budget here in Mexico from ultra inexpensive to the crazy luxurious. We've got it all here in Merida. If you have not seen the other neighborhood videos that I've done for Merida, then I would recommend these videos, which touch on three homes found in kind of the fancier region of Merida.